Hey up everybody. Uh, right then I'm on part three of my e-bike hub restoration modification whatever you want to call it. So I got this hub out of a wheel from a, a friend of a friend of a friend. It's an obsolete hub that wasn't working and what I'm doing I'm uh, I'm converting it into a, from a rear wheel hub into a front wheel hub to fit in these forks. So just briefly then, um, if you've not seen parts 1 and 2 you might have to look at the old story and take a look back. But briefly, this hub had its own controller in which is uh, not working. So what I'm doing then, I'm going to I'm wiring it up to work off a standalone controller and I've also had to machine everything down so it fits in this hub. I've just wired it, finished wiring it all up, the hall sensors etc. And it's now ready for putting into the wheel. Uh, now this procedure here is a bit risky if you're not careful. Because when this, when this rotor approaches that hub, the magnets pull it in and you've no second chance of moving your fingers so keep your fingers out of the way uh, I've got no proper equipment to put it in so it's just going to be um, suck it and see so I'll get the wheel set up and we'll have a look then Okay, then that's the rotor fitted. Yeah, and you have got to watch your fingers there because once that magnet grabs, uh, there's no, there's no letting, no holding back. It goes in straight away. So I've just got the covers to fit, and there's a, there's an O-ring on these covers. I think once I've tried it, I might just take the covers off and put some silicon sealant round just to belt and brace it. That's the sleeve to protect the wire when the hub's spinning and that will be tie wrapped, I'll put a tie wrap onto that just to bring it up behind the fork there. Right, we're ready for a test run now with some power on. So I'll go and sort some power out and then we'll have a look at it. Okay, it's the moment of truth for this project anyway. I've put my wheel in my uh, exercise trainer that I made. I'm into my conservatory because I need to utilise my 36 volt, volt battery that I've got on my wife's bike which I did a while back, I put a, a Volomart kit on that so I've changed controller over to this one that I'll be using on this bike from the one that was on air bike uh, and I've coupled the positive and the negative into the battery and then my phase wires, these three here, these thicker wires from the controller, yellow to yellow, green to red, blue to black. Now it may be that 
depending on what brand of motor you get, your phase wires might be might be slightly not coloured, perhaps coloured different, but be in a different sequence. So if the wheel don't go, don't be disheartened. Uh, you just have to try different combinations of them wires. Then I've got the hall sensors here into this six this six way connector but there's only five wires in it and I've had to push them wires in just temporarily till I couple this up to a connecting block I don't want to couple it into the, into the connecting block now because I want to cut my wire to, to a suitable length once I get it on my bike so I've got red to positive on the con red to red on the controller black to black blue to blue, yellow to yellow, green to green. So that's just standard colour in that. Again, you may have to uh, alter those three wires round, the uh, blue, yellow and green. Your positive and your negative will always stay the same. Uh, sometimes the wheel don't run properly apparently it like either sticks and it won't go or it judders and that's because the wires are not in the correct sequence so I've got it coupled up to this uh, throttle and a stop start switch here and a battery indicator and that's what I'm going to be using on my, on my other bike I've just got to get a pedal assist sensor to couple into it at a later date. So we'll try it then. I think that's going a bit faster than it should be going because this is a 24 volt motor and I've got 36 volts running into it so it is going to put the um, I think it'll put the wattage up instead of this being perhaps a 200 watt motor with this 36 volt battery on it'll probably be ended up end up to be a four or five hundred watt motor now the downside to that is uh, a will my, cola, will my controller take it I think it will and B the motor might run a little hotter than it would do on, on 24 volts I think I think that's right what I'm saying uh, somebody will correct me if I'm wrong anyway so I'm going to be running it on 36 volt and I'll, I'll keep an eye on whether it does heat up or not and if it does I'll probably have to revert to 24 volts well, it seems to be going fine. I think I've had a lucky guess with them wires because I've got a red and a black on the uh, hub, on the outward on the hub, on the outward wire, and it's green and blue in the controller. The yellow one is same, so uh, probably just had a bit of a lucky guess there. Maybe if they were all the way around, it won't it won't run as smooth or perhaps won't run at all. I'm pleased with that. And I've got facility on this controller where I can couple these two wires together here. These two blue wires. And it should half the power. That should go at half power now. And I'll incorporate a switch on my handlebars then I can flick from high to low power. So that's not going as fast. So if I can just try to demonstrate, I'll just wedge that in the leg. And then disconnect this wire. And that's double the speed. I've got to now 
because this is a 700c wheel my wheel is a 20, old 26 inch tie I've got to take all the spokes out the rim and then re-spoke it into my other into my mountain bike wheel to get a, to get a 26 inch because this will not fit in my forks I'll sign off for now then thanks for watching and I'll catch you when I'm probably re-spoking this wheel up bye for now then